हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे आवर टॉपिक इज ओड टू ओटम फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इट इज नेसेसरी टू अंडरस्टैंड ओट इज एन ओड ओड इज ए पोयम दैट इज डिग्निफाइड एंड जनरली एड्रेस्ड such as ode to autumn address to autumn ode to a nightingale address to nightingale ode to a grecian urn address to grecian urn so it is generally in the form of an address the poem to autumn is an ode and in this poem the poet is in a contented mood this poem is marked neither by the depression of the ode to a nightingale nor the excitement of the ode to a grecian urn the key note of this poem is tranquility the poet is in a contented mood the poet is in a mood of satisfaction and he describes the season with complete satisfaction in the poem the poet pictures the fruits flowers and insects of autumn season among the fruits there are grapes apples cod and hazelnuts the poet gives reference to the bees and the insects of the season the poet presents autumn in its various forms first he personifies autumn as a harvester harvesting the crop and then as a tired reaper a reaper who is reaping the crop and felt tired and got asleep and then a cleaner the sights sounds and objects of nature make an appeal to the poet's heart the wailful choir of small gnats the movements of the lambs the creeping of the crickets and the whistling of the red breast bird make an appeal to the poet's whistling of the red breast bird make an appeal to the poet's heart the poet fully enjoys the autumn season he feels no regret for spring that is gone the poet tries to tease autumn and asks where are the songs of spring are ah, where are they but then the poet himself answers that think not of them you have your own music you have your music too so the poet is fully enjoying the poem the poet is fully satisfied in the poem by describing autumn season he begins by saying autumn as a season of mist and mellow fruitfulness autumn is the season of mists which are formed as the winter is drawn up from the earth by the strong heat of the sun the autumn is the season of mists which are formed as the water is drawn up from the earth by the strong heat of the sun it is the time 
when the fruits ripen to their very core the bright sun shines clearly in the sky and all the fruits apples grapes hazelnuts are ripened to the full there is a plentiful crop of fruits and vegetables the vines are covered with grapes and the moss covered trees of the cottage garden bend with the weight of the apples which have been ripened to their core in the friendship of the sun the poet says conspiring with the sun sun is helping in getting the fruit mature ripen the season of autumn in the company of its friend the sun combines to develop the gourd and makes the hazelnut grown sweet kernel within their shell and appear plump even the later flowers are set to bloom bees suck up their pollen and go on collecting honey from these flowers into their sticky hives there is such a rich harvest of flowers in autumn and so wide is the opportunity for bees to collect honey that they feel that summer season will continue for ever the bees think that the warm days will never cease because they are continuously getting honey the bee hives are full of honey in this stanza it is the ripeness in plenty which is described everything in autumn is shown in activity everything is shown active the poet further says that autumn is a season that is a season of pleasure in the second stanza the poet says that autumn season provides ripeness and he personified autumn he personified autumn he creates picture after picture of autumn season four pictures of autumn are presented by the poet autumn is seen as a farmer sitting on the granary floor with his hair waving in the winnowing wind as a farmer a farmer is winnowing uh, separating um, grains from uh, the other things so when the the wind is there when the winnowing wind is there the hairs are uplifted the farmer autumn is sitting care full free without any worry on its mind autumn is also seen in the form of a reaper autumn is seen as a reaper a reaper who is reaping crops who has been induced to sleep by the fume of poppies near his half reaped furrow while reaping due to the fume of poppies autumn get sleepy the reaper is seen holding in his hand the reaping hook the hook that is used to reap the crop and leaving a line of comb only half mown and the tender flowers are there unharmed autumn is seen further in the form of a gleaner with the sleeve of corn on his head for going a stream or crossing a stream or crossing a brook with a steady and firm foot balancing the load because there is load on the head of the autumn and to so balancing the load of corn on his head and again autumn can be seen in the form of a farmer 
sitting near the cider press for hours and hours without any break so autumn has been personified by the poet in four ways first of all autumn is seen as on the granary floor then autumn is there as a reaper as a reaping the crop and then taking the load away on its head by personifying autumn the poet's desire is to create picture after picture to create picture of autumn season of the familiar sights of the season in the autumn season one can see farmers sitting lazily and easily on the granary floor watching the winnowing of their corn reapers sleeping amidst their half cut sweat with their seeds in their hands gleaners crossing the brook with sieves of corn on their heads and farmers sitting at familiar spots where the juice of apples is extracted from the cider press farmers are seen sitting beside the cider press watching patiently for a long time the juice pressed out of the apple drops by drop the whole stanza represents keats pictorial quality as well as is hellenism the poet further says in the poem that autumn has a sweet music of its own first of the poet himself teases autumn by saying ah where are the songs of spring ah where are they but then the poet himself answers in the poem and says that autumn has a sweet music of its own these songs are sweeter than the songs of spring season sung by the happy birds we hear the creeping of the crickets and the morning sound of the small gnats in autumn season besides this autumn presents many beautiful sights of its own clouds became golden because of sunlight the pleasant color of the clouds seem to prolong the day after sunset fields appear rosy at this time after the sun set one can hear the gnats creeping and making a mournful sound among the willows growing in the beds of rivers it appears as if they are mourning the death of the departing day the lines proceeded with the images of death or withdrawal and the song are a funeral dies for the dying day the dire song the death song the poet is depicting death is recognized as something inherent to the causes of things death is the ultimate end of everything uh, everyone who takes birth have to die so the poet is also indicating that the condition and price of all fulfillment uh, the final end is death the sound of the gnats is heard at a distance when the wind blows or near the willows when the wind is blowing near the willows when there is no wind we can hear the loud bleating of lambs and whistling sound of the robin red breast the twitter of the swallows migrating to warmer countries is also heard during this season so the autumn season has its own music there is no need to think about the songs of spring 
the last stanza begins with the only comment the poet offers in his own person where are the songs of spring ah where are they but there is no rebellion in the answer the poet says think not of them thou hast thy music too then follows an image of the day which like autumn is going to end but the death is accompanied by fulfillment so in this way the poem is full of pictures the poet creates picture after picture and this poet is one of the best example of the great poet's pictorial quality